Hi everybody and welcome to Today in Iowa. You may recall I bought a uh, six inch bucket recently uh, to bury a couple hundred feet of inch and a half conduit and I'm putting this in along my driveway to get power and data to my new security cameras and uh, some gate functions that I have in my driveway. So the ground around here is very rocky, a lot of clay. This is, uh, we've had so much rain here you can see it's, it's kind of muddy. But it's just a tough, stubborn dig going through here. And I couldn't be happier the way the, uh, the machines are digging through this. Getting some pretty good shovelfuls there, and I couldn't have been happier. I'm going down about 18 inches. That's code here that I'm putting in it in conduit. It can't be damaged, so 18 inches is fine. That's just about that bucket. And that's how I'm judging how deep I want to be. I honestly go looking for projects now that I otherwise wouldn't do if I didn't have the backhoe. I couldn't imagine not having a backhoe now. From planting trees to doing this type of work, I'm really enjoying it and I find a lot of value in it. So everything was really going along terrifically. It was one of the few sunny days we've had this fall and late summer. A really nice day to get out and do this digging. Well, here in about 30 seconds, you're going to learn, at the time I learned, that I had a ruptured or broken line. I saw a white whisper of white smoke go by. I didn't know if the weeds were on fire or what was going on. But I saw the white puff of smoke, and that made me investigate, shut down, and, well, let's see where it takes us. About 10 seconds. I saw white smoke, very faint light smoke going by me, and here it is, it's a hydraulic hose, shoot. Watch, I found it. When I moved the bucket out, Can you see the mistake yet? Wait for it, it's coming. I don't know if you can hear that or not. You can hear it sucking air when I hold that down. I got a bad feeling. For John Deere's poor design here on these hydraulic hoses, and I know the changes for 18. There just so happens there was a 2018 sitting in my dealer's lot with the newer backhoe. And look at how they ran the hydraulic lines. So much better, they appear to be protected. You're not stomping on them and tripping on them, and it sure is a lot nicer design. So back at the shop, also my garage when the wife's home. I'll bet you that's got one of these connections loose. That's not it. Well, that's disappointing. That's the uh, hose that goes to the backhoe. Well, this doesn't have 15 hours on it. So that's disappointing. So apparently binding those two hoses using that nylon wire wrap caused it to rub through the other cable. It's all my fault. Lesson learned. I get it. I'll never do that again. So it's time to load the trailer up. I just acquired this trailer and I'm going to do a video on that. I reached out to a lot of you and got your opinions on what type of trailer to purchase. 
and I use that information to purchase this one. I've also saw a lot of conversations on how do you tow your machine, forwards or backwards. Well, the rear backhoe attachment uh, just about struck the ground going forward, and this is my first time loading this tractor onto the trailer. So I turned it around and backed it on, and I've been out five or six times since, and I always tow it backwards. It seems to work very well. Now since I had the 2018 sitting up in the dealer's lot, I want to point something else out. When I'm operating my 1025, I often will reach around back and swing the boom for counterbalance. So if I'm on a slope, I would like to reach around and swing that machine. And it's not impossible, but you know it can be done. Again, there's just a small level of inconvenience with this seat. So you'll have to weigh that out on your own and see if that's uh, worth it. But not a deal killer to me, but just something that I want to be aware if I trade up to this model someday. I never realized how much I look behind and then I adjust the bucket for loading or counterbalance or figuring out my dig length. So I really, like the convenience of being able to just reach around back there and, and uh, adjust that bucket. Well, I am very fortunate that my dealer is only seven miles away. If I turn right and go south, there's a Massey dealer. If I turn left and go north, there's a John Deere slash Kubota dealer. So it's just a, a 10 or 15 minute ride up. A lot of conversations on buying local. And on a Sunday afternoon, it was really nice to be able to take the tractor up, drop it off, put the key in the drop box, and I picked it up Good. next Friday, all done and ready to go. For it. So buying local within your proximity of the dealership over another, you really want to weigh that out. Buying local near your home is very convenient. So I dropped the tractor off and I was on my way before I knew it. And let's go back to the uh, shop and recap on what I learned and what I'd like to pass on to you today. Okay, so I got the machine back from the shop. Everything's cleaned up. The hydraulic fluid leaks all cleaned up. They did a real nice job. So what I wanted to pass on to everybody is don't tie your hoses together like this. I was using two wire ties to do that so it keep my feet out of here and not hit that or trip on it. And apparently that rubbed through and caused a leak to this hose. So I'll just pass that on to you. If anybody knows any good way of securing this hose so it is out of your way, and maybe you just have to accept that as the design. So that's all we've got today. I hope you, uh, you can learn from this and maybe expand on that. And we'll see you next time from Today in Iowa. Hey, it just came in the mail. Another life's lesson certificate. I'll put it with my other two or three thousand I have. Have a good day, everybody. See you next time.